Our next speaker is George Agathon, Senior Vice President, Asia Pacific of Ivanhoe, Cambridge. Welcome. Hi, Desmond. Now, as a pension fund investor from North America, how are you guys managing your current Asia portfolio of investments under these COVID times, George? Yeah, look, um, Ivanhoe, Cambridge has been in Asia uh, and have had people on the ground for uh, close to 15 years now. So we have a team in Hong Kong, uh, in Shanghai, and in Mumbai uh, covering the region. So to, uh, you know, when COVID hit, and it's about a year now uh, that we've been living under these conditions, um, having people on the ground certainly has made it easier. Uh, we focus very much on people's, uh, our team's health and safety. Uh, so that was pretty important. Uh, we were working from home at different speeds in, in all the different offices. And then obviously working with our partners as well to make sure um, our properties were well managed. So we went into asset management overdrive. Um, ensuring that um, at least our stakeholders uh, were well protected during this time. Um, interestingly, for our organization, we started a work from home program um, about six months before COVID. Mm -hmm. So when COVID hit, um, we were pretty able to scale up the IT backbone, uh, mm -hmm. the platform. Everybody went back, first Zoom meetings, or we used WebEx, first WebEx and Teams meetings, uh, went <coughs> really smoothly, and then that became our kind of normal course of the um, of, of our business day. Okay. Yeah. I think another one of our speakers earlier, it might have been Francois, who mentioned, you know, uh, you have to have people on the ground in order to do real estate. Now, you, you had mentioned that you guys were in the forefront of work from home. Would you agree with that? Do you, do you have to be kind of on the ground? Would you open more offices in light of this COVID? That, that's a really good question, because if, if um, I think in the short term, at least in 2020, uh, we got by, uh, we made, we continued to make investments. Mm -hmm. We obviously paused in the first half of the year because we weren't too sure what was going on. Um, but then as we saw how Asia in particular managed the pandemic slightly better than other places, uh, our confidence levels went up to make further investments. But as traditional real estate practitioners, you know, we, we want to see it, we want to feel it. Yeah. Uh, a lot of our business model depends on you know finding the right partners and managers and you know people that that help us in the different cities. So that's been quite difficult. So establishing new relationships have, has been obviously a lot more difficult uh, during this period. But in terms of investing, uh, the team fortunately um, in different cities, but also from different places, we have a, quite a large number of nationalities that sit here. So when we talk about Sydney or Melbourne or Tokyo or in China, any one of the, most of the cities in China, we have somebody in the team that actually knows the city, knows the building, knows the location. Okay. How do you see inbound investment strategy for Asia changing or evolving in the future as a result of something like COVID? Um, I think, you know, Asia was already on the path of becoming more significant for um, international investors in their global portfolio. Uh, you know, kind of 15, 20 years ago, Asia was probably a more niche component mm -hmm. of a global real estate portfolio. There's been a lot of development. There's a lot of really good product now. And we're seeing Asia really becoming a, a big slice of the pie. So for Ivanhoe, Cambridge, you know, we're kind of about 7% of our global portfolios in Asia. Seven? Seven, okay. right? That, you know, we're looking to double that uh, in, in this kind of short, medium term. So, so the ambitions are great. COVID has just, I guess, reinforced what we felt were longer term trends, uh, urbanization, the rise of e-commerce, um, and kind of the rising middle class here in Asia. So, so things that we thought were uh, going to be uh, important for our portfolio um, over this next decade, uh, uh, that's been accelerated by COVID in a large extent. Okay. Um, some of our audience, of course, are very familiar with Asia, and I'm guessing some are not as familiar with Asia. Can you? Share with us some of the key success factors for Ivanhoe Cambridge in the time that you've been here. Uh, sure. Tell the audience about that. Sure. Um, so, you know, the, the typical way that investors from outside of Asia have invested into Asia is through, um, I guess, funds. So finding a manager that has a good track record in, in Asia um, and then investing with them in a more passive sense. So. You know, they invest and the manager does uh, pretty much most of it. So, so then building up kind of comfort and understanding of the markets, the dynamics, 
and then maybe making a few more kind of more direct investments. Mm -hmm. But the success factors have always remained uh, that Asia is a very diverse place, very complex place, many different countries. It's a little bit different from Europe in that we don't have a common, uh, I guess, um, uh, uh, region or economic right. zone. Right. Uh, so, you know, the laws are different, tax is different. Um, and so that drives some complexity and, and challenges for investing in the Asian market. So first filter in terms of managing risk, I would say for most of our peers is finding the right partners. Uh, finding the right fiduciary partners, fund managers, developers that you want to work with, uh, that's always been the key success factor before you kind of talk about any kind of real estate projects. Mm -hmm. George, off camera, we had talked a little bit about the submissions for this year and yeah. in recent times. And you, you had told me that ESG is something that you've noticed is, is uh, very prevalent in changing the region. Tell us about that. Yeah, uh, you know, this year again, you know, really super impressed by the quality of submissions around ESG. Um, you know, we have a separate ESG category, obviously, mm -hmm. but you know, pretty much every project uh, in every category has incorporated this. And over the years, uh, ESG was something that was, um, yep, something that happened in the West, uh, something that maybe you know you read about, and then the technology and the people and the talent weren't really in Asia. Uh, that's really, really changed. Now we're seeing sustainability. Um, we're seeing Asia lead that. A lot of developers and investors lead that here. For us, uh, we have a very ambitious target to reduce our carbon uh, emissions, our carbon footprint in our real estate portfolio. So, you know, from our perspective, how we look to influence the industry is, you know, very soon we will not be making any investments unless those investments mm -hmm. kind of add to our, our uh, low carbon portfolio. So, so yeah. Something to look out for. Sir. Sure. Okay, that was George Agathon from Ivanhoe, Cambridge. Thank you very much for joining us, George. Thank you, Desmond. Really appreciate it. Thank you.